In this video, we're going to be looking at enzymes and your metabolism. Enzymes can create two different types of reactions, which is quite special. It can make from one big substance, it can make two smaller substances like X can make Y and Z, or from two smaller molecules, it can actually make a larger molecule like A plus B can equal C. They can produce multiple products from a large substrate. This is known as catabolism. Or they can create one large substrate from multiple substrates. This is known as anabolism. An easy way to remember this is anabolism adds. So think add anabolism. Now, the misconception of metabolism. Your metabolism refers to biochemical processes that occur in any living organism to maintain life. People think that if you have a fast metabolism, you are actually skinnier. And if you have a slow metabolism, you might be obese. However, this is not necessarily true. The biochemical processes allow us to grow, reproduce, repair damage, and respond to our environment. Metabolism involves two main processes, catabolism, which is breaking down things, and anabolism, building up things in your body. Anabolism, we're going more into anabolism examples here. As you can see with this diagram, you can see an anabolic pathway. We have smaller substances here, which actually build up into a larger substance. Anabolism builds things and consumes energy, making bigger things out of smaller things and using up energy in the process. Anabolism or biosynthesis allows the body to grow new cells and maintain the tissues. Good examples of this include building up muscles in your body. So the body uses simple molecules to create complex ones in the same way a builder will use simple building blocks such as bricks to create a house. The growth of bone and increases in muscle mass are example of anabolism. Another example is actually just developing. So when you're a baby and developing and growing, you're actually growing tissue. So that's also examples of anabolism and takes a lot of energy. It explains why when you're younger, you might have a stronger drive to eat more food. So anabolism and catabolism. This here, it says here it's a monomer. Now a monomer is just a very simple substance, a very simple molecule. So each circle here may represent an amino acid, which amino acids, remember, build up proteins. So the anabolic processes uses monomers to build polymers. Mono means one and poly means many. So that would make sense. Monomers can build up polymers. A polymer is a large complex molecule made of many small molecules that are similar to each other. Those small molecules are called monomers. monomers. For example, amino acids, which are simple molecules, monomers, through a series of anabolic chemical reactions, build up proteins, which are large and complex molecules, polymers. Now we're talking about catabolism. In both processes, anabolism and catabolism, you do use energy in both. So catabolism refers to the chemical reactions that result in breaking down a polymer into a monomer. And in, this, in the process, you can actually create energy. Catabolic reactions usually release energy that is used to drive chemical reactions. Catabolism provides the energy that our bodies need to, for physical activity from a cellular level right up to the whole body movement. So when you actually use your muscles, you're actually using the sugar in your muscles for energy and it's breaking down the sugar for energy for you to use. The catabolic chemical reactions in the living cell break down polymers into monomers. Um, for example, now polysaccharides are a type of sugar. It's a type of complex sugar and they can be broken down into monosaccharides, which are simple sugars. Examples of complex carbs, which are polysaccharides, include starch, glycogen, and cellulose. Starch you can get from potatoes, and cellulose you can actually get from plants. So we eat this quite often if you're eating salads and vegetables. Simple carbs include glucose, ribose, and fructose, and they're all monosaccharides. Now, glucose uh, you can get from those simple lollies, and that's the simple form of sugar that you can get. And fructose actually comes from fruits. 
Another example of catabolism. So proteins are broken down into amino acids. The amino acids produced by catabolism may be directly recycled, used to make new amino acids or to be converted to other compounds such as other proteins in your body that your body can use. In simple terms, our body weight is actually a result of catabolism minus anabolism. In other words, the amount of energy we release into our bodies, catabolism minus the amount of energies that our body uses up, anabolism. So it's a common misconception and a common belief that slim people have a high metabolism, while overweight or obese people have a low metabolism. That's not necessarily the case. However, it does also depend on the input of food and types of food that a person eats. Now intolerances. Milk intolerances is quite common in the human population. Milk and other dairy products contain a sugar or a carbohydrate called lactose. Normally the body breaks down lactose into its similar components with the help of the enzyme and the enzyme is called lactase. Most mammals stop actually producing lactase when they're being weaned from their mother. However, humans, they continue to produce this lactase, which means that we can continue to drink milk and have dairy products. Without enough lactase, a person can have digestive problems, and these problems can include bloating, ab pain, and diarrhea. This is known as lactose intolerance or lactase deficiency. Enzymes act as a catalyst to help these reactions occur. Enzymes can hand, help end up with a larger product at the end, which is known as anabolism, adding, or break down a substrate into smaller components, catabolism. People can have a lack of enzymes, which can also lead to food intolerances. That's it for this video. Next up, we're looking at enzymes in depth. Thank you.